Hello, and welcome to our servant podcast, Observant. Clever, right? We are your hosts, Bill and Sonia, and in today's episode, we'll, re- we'll be reviewing season three, episodes one and two of Servant. We're going to do it a little bit different this time. Uh, no video and just kind of do a, a freestyle podcast and kind of give our thoughts and discuss the episode. Uh, we'll be putting on our detective hats and dissecting and discussing each character's disposition, symbolism, and theories. Uh, be sure to listen all the way through for details. The first episode was called Donkey, right? Mm-hmm, donkey. And the first episode was directed by M. Knight Shyamalan Man himself. himself. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the first thing I noticed was the new introduction. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, the it's song cool. was a little bit different. The... The, um, the song's different? Mm-hmm. A, oh. a tad bit different. Oh, I didn't notice that. I did notice the difference in the thing, which is cool because I started ignoring it. Oh, really? The end of last season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to the, you know, because it yeah. was the same thing every time. Yeah, they're both creepy. At the end of this one, you kind of see what you see Leanne and... There's like some people. Oh, they look zombies. like zombie yeah. looking people, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. it's more horror movie ish. I yeah. thought, you know, definitely mm-hmm. looks like you're, mm-hmm. you're watching a horror movie more than. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah, I do. I think it was really cool. Oh, well, it's been three months since Asa, since Aunt Josephine knocked on the Turner's doorstep, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and got, so got murdered <laughs> in the process. <laughs> She probably knocked on the wrong door. <laughs> and for everyone, I've been reading the comments in like the Facebook or just like the servant groups. Yeah, yeah. And that's Aunt Josephine behind oh, the, the wall. Yeah, and the club. People, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Of course it's Aunt Josephine. That's Aunt Josephine covered in moths. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> behind the wall. Yeah, people were actually asking, who's that in the wall? Like, have you watched the show? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but Jericho's back. It's according to, I guess he's got two teeth and a third is coming in. Mm. So, and the Turners are headed to the Jersey Shore. So dumb. Why is that dumb? I think it's dumb. Uh, what are you talking about? Three months ago, someone came in and tried oh. to murder you all. Like, and there's a cult out there after you or after Leanne or any of you. What are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. Stay in the house. Dorothy feels like they need. Some we stayed air. in the house for the past two years for COVID. <laughs> Come on, if you if we could do COVID, you could do the Children of the Dawn or whatever the heck their name is. The right, Church right. Church of the New, whatever. Yeah. And they're totally ignoring Leanne. The door's open. Yes. Leanne's like, "Why is the door open?" And they're just like, you know, like totally ignoring her, and. Which I mean, I get Dorothy. I get Dorothy. The windows open. Yeah, I get I get Dorothy. Why she's because she's delusional anyway. Yeah, you know, Dorothy. Dorothy has Dorothy has no idea what what's happening. Reality, but Sean and Julian know what's what's going on. They know better. So they 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 need to be paranoid. I mean, Leanne is totally paranoid. And got, Leanne's rightfully paranoid. Yeah, rightfully par- paranoid. I she even should call be par- it paranoid. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she's the way you should be if a cult's after you. Oh, that is so true. Gosh. So I think they're doing a really good job of, with this season, with anticipation. Like, oh, yeah. They're building suspense and, yeah, showing how, how paranoid she is, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is definitely the happiest I've seen the Turners, though. You know, Sean and Dorothy really seem to be enjoying, you know, parenthood. Yeah. So, yeah, and they, they seem do. to be being really nice to each other. Yeah, they have a common enemy now, I guess. This is the, the cult, not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not each other, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Dorothy's still being condescending, though. Dorothy's oh, Dorothy's totally condescending. Sean. He don't seem to care, though. Hmm? He doesn't seem to care. He like pulls it off. No, he doesn't. She even call. He even call. She even calls him a a kitty cat. A oh, that's right. And he's, he's like agree. Yeah, he's like yeah. yeah I've always, I've always been, <laughs> I've always been one. You know, I'm like okay. Oh, uh, but Dorothy, where do I begin? She's so weird. Yeah. Um, she's weird. We she's rude. Dorothy. Yeah, we do. We we hate Dorothy. Dorothy haters. 
Um, but oh, gosh, where should should we just go by each character? Yeah, yeah, go by each character. So Dorothy, why we don't like Dorothy this if episode? You don't know. <laughs> This episode, we don't like Dorothy because she's rude. She is rude. She's like the privileged rich lady who just, you know, Mm -hmm. she doesn't realize how much danger everyone else is in. So she's just like, yeah, whatever. Right. Right. Let's go to the beach because I need (laughs) out, you know. (laughs) And it's calling. Okay. First, she calls Leanne a twig. Is that a compliment? I mean, I would find it. You call me a twig, I'm going to love it. But I really don't think that's a compliment. You don't think she meant it as a compliment? No, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think she. I, I didn't get any, like, hatefulness out of that. But No. You know, right? Once I watched it a couple of times, I saw what you meant. So it was kind of caustic, the way she said it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe. Yeah, she, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. She calls um, Sean inadequate because he can't breastfeed. Yeah. Just, just the way she says it. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like so arrogant. And, ugh. <laughs> when she's feeding Jericho, she says he's like a little Italian baby. I don't know what she meant by that. I know it's almost a little racist, right? Almost a little, little, I don't know, something about it that was just, I thought it showed her like privilege, you know, her cluelessness about how she acts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She just came across real crappy with that comment. You know, yeah. I wonder if Italians are that. And we're like, what? What was that? Oh, are they to part mean? Italian? I mean, I don't, I don't, I just, I didn't get that. Nothing's been said. That comment with her. Yeah. Um, she's arrogant, you know, I, mm. but it, arrogant, but it was funny when she said, um, everything looks good on me, except oh, yeah. you said, you said, except, except those pants. <laughs> pants she was wearing. I didn't think they were flattering, <laughs> you know. Oh my God. But gosh. we can't. You know, I wouldn't have said that out loud to other people. Thanks for outing me there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you wouldn't have said that. Oh. Well, we're talking about the actress's appearance here. I'm like, I'm just hating on Dorothy, you know. I'm sure they were fine. I was just mad at Dorothy. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so what she, oh, she asked, I don't know if you guys noticed, but she asked for Sean's opinion on the glasses she was wearing. Yeah. She said, um, but, but picked the opposite ones. Right. She made a face and then picked the, the opposite glasses of what he said, the yeah. ones he should wear. Yeah. What else? I mean, she was just really strange with that song that she was singing. That yeah. Was the, the weirdness. The pirate song the, that's like mm-hmm. has, again, some dubious racist roots to it. <laughs> if you research the song, it's, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, if we research, yeah, the re, we, we, we research. It could be like a cultural appropriation thing almost. Maybe they were trying to lead on to that because she's very clueless. You know, I could see her appropriating and having no idea that she's being rude, you know. Mm-hmm. She just thinks she's, it's a pirate song, but really the origins of that song is from an, a spiritual, an old ne- Negro, spiritual Negro. God. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that? Oh my gosh! It's <laughs> called a roll the old chariot along. Mm. So it said it originated as an. Sorry, I shouldn't have said Negro. Well, it originated as an African American spiritual. Okay, thanks for cleaning that. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I can say Negro. Well, you can, but so? You can't. I know. So. You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was, that, was, that was Dorothy. This episode was very Leanne-focused, but let's go to Julian. Yeah, because his, his, I think, was the most interesting. Julian? Yeah. He's got the biggest change. It's kind of annoying. In a way, because I've known people that have been through that. It is oh, because very it, annoying. Yeah. So he goes to rehab. Right. 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 And breaks up with that girl, he, that crazy girl that we were making fun of with last, last season. Who, Natalie? Yeah. Yeah. So they broke up. Right. Natalie. When we, he were went making, to rehab, we were making rehab. fun of Natalie? Yeah. She, well, kind of. She was funny, you know. She was a highlight of, she amused us in the, in the last one. I don't want to say make, making fun of her, but. 
you just don't remember. I don't. I, I like I like Natalie. Well, of Natalie course, wasn't but... wasn't really funny at all. She was all serious. Yeah, you have to go back and watch the Natalie part. Natalie and the dad, you know, the back and forth. Anyway, whatever. So they break up after his what third stint in rehab. He said. Right. They they said that Natalie was with him two times in yeah. rehab. <laughs> so the third time that was it. Yeah. And then he, he met some girl in, in rehab. But mm-hmm. now he's all he's all different and you know, he's all into a health kick, so he found something else to be addicted to. Right, yeah. You know? This show is full of gift giving, you know. Dorothy gave Leanne the bikini and then Julian gives them a Peloton. Well, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or did he give it to himself? He's there. He's living there with them, apparently. You know, so mm-hmm. here, here's a mm-hmm. gift for you. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely for himself. He's doing lunges in the living room. <laughs> Drinking do- green. Yeah, green yeah. Green drink. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He's I too- hate green drink, God. Ugh. I've, I know someone out there is going, oh, what, you'd like mine. Uh-uh. I've tried them all, and they're <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Let's see. He was attacked by that flock of seagulls. Yeah, after after uh, um, Leanne had that little auto-riding moment, you know, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. she spazzed out and started, uh, um, you know, riding. But maybe we'll talk about that in Leanne's part. Yeah, so... That was funny, though. What was funny? Him being attacked by the seagulls. And it showed his face. He's all pissy looking. It just, you know, gave me Ron Weasley vibes. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was funny that uh, Dorothy said he may need a tetanus shot and that she compared him to a crab cake. (laughs) (laughs) Did she or did she say he was eating a crab cake? No, she said he was like a crab cake and got attacked. By a flock of seagulls, or oh, that's hilarious! Or something like that. that, and then he needed to be humbled. <laughs> well, he was humbled. <laughs> uh, uh, so, my favorite line of Julian's because I always love Julian. Usually has great lines in the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Always. But my favorite line with him was when uh, Sean was feeding. Um, when Sean was feeding Jericho, he said, "What's wrong with your face?" And it was because Sean was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, how about you? Oh, my favorite. Um, I think when they were talking about cults, you know, mm-hmm. and Leanne's like, hey, why are you guys acting like nothing's going on? You know, keep the door closed, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, how do you how do you spot cults or something? And, and Julian goes, the Midwest dead eyes. <laughs> 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 I thought that was funny. Uh, that was funny. Yeah. Mm, so let's go on whoever we cover Sean and you tell him like they should put on sunglasses or something spice it up oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was really funny <laughs> uh so let's see so Sean 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 is well, like feeding he said, he's super happy this episode is fatherhood thing yeah yeah he's, he's being just... really nice to Leanne I've never seen him be this nice to yeah, Leanne yeah yeah he's definitely trying to make up for you know that stuff. Yeah, well, but then I think... again, he's he's uh, he's also indulging Dorothy's inconsiderateness. You know, in consideration. Well, they all they all, they all seem to indulge Dorothy. It's Dorothy's world. We're nah. just a squirrel trying to get. They're just squirrels <laughs> trying to get a nut. <laughs> right. this is Dorothy's world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think many people are going to get that reference, but that's hilarious. Orange Juice Jones. <laughs> Look it up. Orange <laughs> Juice Jones. <laughs> Uh, I just think it's refreshing to see them getting along, but Sean is just being classic. Sean with the picnic, he packs. Oh my God, who? Yeah, who? You know who packs smoked trout? Smoked trout for your picnic? Like yeah, how, on a picnic. How and odd. Botarga. Yeah, well, because that was their first meal that he created for. Her, which what an odd thing, mm-hmm. you know. B- mm-hmm. Bucatini with Botarga. It's like I had to look up what it was. Right. And it was, it's like poor man's caviar or something. It's like fish eggs, fish roe. Right. And pasta. And pasta. Yeah. It's like, okay. 
yeah, I'm positive. I thought it was interesting how they kept calling Leanne from the, you know, checking on her. Yeah. And when they, that one time that Sean called, he uh, suggested the that bottle of wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that crazy bottle of wine. <laughs> like if y'all haven't looked it up, which I know most Servant fans probably did. That bottle of wine is crazy. That 96 Petrus? I think Petrus? it was Petrus. Yeah, yeah. So that was what? What would you say? Five thousand dollars a bottle. That particular that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Some of those Petrus bottles, we we looked up one. It was it was like sixty thousand dollars. Oh my god. Yeah, for one for a bottle, but that particular one was five grand. Yeah. And he's just letting her like, hey, yeah, try this bottle. Go good with your Campbell soup. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> Who's going to eat, drink a $5,000 bottle of wine with Campbell's soup? Right, right. Oh, my God. Yeah, so they must, maybe they have more money than we thought. Yeah, I think they got a lot more money than we thought. Well, I mean, we never really talked about it that much. I mean, I don't know how much she gets paid for being a, you know, a news reporter, but he's a celebrity chef that's on TV and stuff, Mm -hmm. you know? So they got to be, you know, plus Dorothy's family was wealthy. Well, we assume. Well, they, they basically said it in the first episode. It's where the house comes from and all that mm-hmm. stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that house is incredible. Yeah. We were um, we're planning on taking a trip to Philadelphia and visiting yeah. the house in May of right. this year. Right. And I was looking at the property maybe. value in those homes, you know, it, they're like over a million dollars. Yeah. So... Hmm. Well, um, my I favorite love the woodwork in there. Yeah, yeah, their house is great. We're seeing it more of the house too, which M Night Shyamalan said we would. Seeing a little bit more of the rooms, different rooms. My favorite line from Sean uh-huh. was when he was checking in on Leanne, and he was and Leanne was concerned that they were followed, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said. I don't think so. There's a couple of meatheads behind us, but it's expected. We're in their country. Yeah, Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never been there, but you know, we all heard. Yeah. We've all heard. I didn't think Jersey Shore was that close to Philadelphia, but yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's only like there. a little over an hour like an away. Hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were probably gone four or five hours. Right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Before before she got in. So let's let's go to Leanne. Leanne, Leanne, Leanne. Leanne Lee. is definitely like uh, you had said before. It seems like she has like a case of agoraphobia, <laughs> you know. Which mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's understandable, right? I mean, someone was trying to kill you. She said it a couple times, you know, like they were trying to kill me. Like, why are you guys acting like it's no big deal? We see her. Uh, the most interesting thing I thought was we see her. With dead bugs trying to resurrect them, and she can't. Oh, that's you know? right. And she's got them all in these glasses and stuff, and you know, and she's got a little uh, insectarium. Yeah. <laughs> in well, her, you know, she's trying to bring these things cabinet. back to life, like she did the dog in mm-hmm. the first episode. And you know, I remember when that happened. I didn't even realize. I was like, "What the hell? Where'd that dog come from? And wasn't it dead? Like, you know, mm-hmm. I guess it wasn't. I just thought, I guess it wasn't dead." You know, it took me a while to realize that she has this ability. Now she doesn't, and I'm wondering why. Is it because, I mean, there's a couple things. I hear some some theories. One, maybe the cult and the leader or the source of their power is far away from them right now. You know, mm-hmm. and maybe it's so far that she doesn't have that power. As long as she doesn't have that power, they're safe. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why she keeps checking. You know, because mm-hmm. as soon as she does, maybe they're close enough and, uh oh, you know, like when she started freaking out and doing the little auto writing thing and Julian got you attacked. You think they're outside, like, like in the vicinity? In and the vicinity. Did... Who knows? Okay. Who knows what the range of their power is? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if it's 100 miles or it's 10 miles. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like as long as she can't do anything, hey, you know, good. They're mm-hmm. not they're not close. And then when she started doing the auto writing thing and she realized, hey, I think that is how Julian got attacked because she kind of smiled, you had mentioned. 
when they mentioned that he got attacked by seagulls and her picture was basically looked like seagulls. Um, then it's almost like, uh oh, maybe they're close now. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think she's lost her powers. I just don't think she knows how to control them. That's, that's a good thought, too. So, like, she can't just willfully bring it back. I think like she has I think, to be in an emotionally yeah. distressed state or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's why I think she smiled when she was, when she looked at the book in the hallway and picked it up. Like, well, after Dorothy called and said that, what was that? I don't know. After Dorothy called and said that Julian was attacked, she found that book with her, with her drawing, with the, with the birds. And then she smiled like, oh, I did that. I haven't lost my powers. Maybe, yeah. It's weird because I, 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 part of me was thinking, well, maybe Josephine was the source of her power or something. Yeah, I don't know. You know, like maybe I'm starting to think like zombies or Game of Thrones, White Walkers or something. Like whoever <laughs> whoever turns you or whoever resurrects you is is in control, you know, like lends you power or mm -hmm. something maybe. And maybe. then once they killed Josephine, she lost her abilities. I don't mm -hmm. know. No, yeah. There's well, so you many think different she may have lost them. I don't think she lost them. Well, I she definitely... Just... Lot, well, she either lost him or she lost access to him because she can't do the things she could before. I don't. I don't think she can just do it on command. Well, she did it on command with Jericho. Ooh. Yeah, but she hadn't. She wasn't distressed then. She was just, you know, mm -hmm. doing her thing. Well, I definitely. And the dog. The dog. They weren't really well, distressed. That was, yeah, that was in season one, season one or season. Well, yeah, season, yeah, season one, one and two. I don't think she has control. Of it. Maybe she's lost a little bit or of the because she can't yeah totally control it but yeah, i don't yeah. think she's lost all of her powers and i think that on josephine with those moths um because moths i looked up um moths and they have the symbolism of moths yeah right they're like rebirth or something right, right. something like that renewal Right. So I wonder if Aunt Josephine is on her way back, is on her way back or is going to be uh, like reincar not reincarnated, maybe. but yeah, well, maybe take on a different form. Maybe the mannequin with the eye patch. Oh, yeah, that eye patch. <laughs> that mannequin did not have that eye patch on. That's right. In the previous season. That's right. So if anybody's. Mandela affecting and thinking that it had it has not because we went back and looked. Yeah, we went back and looked, and I think Leanne yeah. stabbed Josephine through Aunt the Josephine eye. through yeah. the eye with yeah. that hot yeah. dagger. Yeah, yeah, and thus the mannequin has a patch. Yeah, has an eye patch. Or maybe that's just her way of dealing with it psychologically. Maybe that's mm. you know Aunt Josephine and her mom and Dorothy all rolled into one. That's why the different dresses and all that. Yeah. It had a different dress too that you said wasn't in any episode. Yeah, I didn't find it in any like of the other episodes. The the archivist of all the ep episodes, she knows who wore what dress, it, <laughs> like <laughs> what what little artifact was used in what scene. It's like, oh my god. Oh, uh, speaking of dress, Leanne had the cutest shoes on in this episode. This little green loafer with the gold buckle. I'm going to going to include some links because I found some. They're actually, expensive. I found I found the shoe, the actual shoe that she wore. They're like seven hundred bucks. Yeah, right? they're like seven hundred dollars. Well, but I found some knockoffs too. Again, they got money. <laughs> well, they do. Leanne doesn't. Well, you know, because they bought her some shoes after being attacked. Well, I think Dorothy acts like they own her, and we'll get to that here and. You know, once we hit the season two. Right. Or, or ep episode two. <laughs> once we hit the episode two. <laughs> right, ep right. You know, section. Because so, so, we're doing episode one and two. So we're we're close. We're almost to two. Yeah, almost. Anyway. So Leanne is praying with the dagger. She is uh, still whipping herself because you see the marks on her back. What? Do you think so? Or do you think they're just... Uh, it looks they're, fresh. They're scars. No, they, they looked, looked fresh. They, to me, they looked fresh. I mean, they're scars too, but to me, they looked fresh. Hmm. But yeah. huh? I'm Let's gonna see. say no. I'm gonna. I don't think she's whipping okay. herself now. But you know, because she, you know, saying it's her life and it's her family, and 
You know what I mean? That's a good point. She's trying not to do the things that they've done. Hmm. Maybe they are scars. She likes sex with Julian. And, and she will not take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there was that weird part. I guess we should have talked about in Julian's section, but hey, you know, whatever. I, uh, you know, the, he got voluntold to go take her for a walk with the baby and be this care security. Mm-hmm. And instead he uses it to try to break up their sexual relationship. And he very awkwardly, awkwardly stumbles through the beginnings of it. And she just said, no, I like what we do and we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> and then... Mm-hmm. She completely ignores it and dismisses the whole conversation and then goes over because she saw that old man standing there and that old man looked kind of zombie-ish, you know. I hate to say yeah. the word well, zombie, but you know I what think I mean. She, that maybe he reminded, she reminded him of Uncle George. Yeah, that's maybe possible. she thought it was Uncle George. And I don't possible. think Uncle George is dead. We don't type him. He got hit by the car, but we don't know if he's dead. It, the well, car didn't hit o- him that hard. I think he's already been dead. So, oh, well. <laughs> what is dead may never die. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, yeah, so she was being the security, which is funny because that's what he was there for. And he's not even paying attention, really, to anybody on the street. He's just worried about his thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Julian, we a lot of greats. He's our favorite character, of course, for good reason. He's most people's favorite character because he's funny and all that good stuff. But he is selfish. You know, he's mm-hmm. a very selfish guy, just like Dorothy. They're very similar in that way. Um, yeah, and he's just thinking of himself and his new, you know, outlook and right. blah, blah, blah. He's, he's uh, trying to... Uh do things differently, he says. He says he felt like a creepy guy sleeping with Such traumatized, traumatized nanny. <laughs> <laughs> traumatized nanny. She's like 19 years old. How um, old is he supposed to be? 35, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. That is a little creepy, I guess. I guess if we knew how old Dorothy was, because he's just a little bit younger than Dorothy. Mm. Anyway. Julian gave him, she got gave drunk him money. On that, oh, yeah. Uh, she, she, on that $5,000 bottle oh, of wine. Oh, right. She, she tried to booty call. Yes. What's his name? Toby. Toby. Yeah. Toby. And when he wasn't readily available, she was like, not interested. Hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Toby has, Toby's sweet, though. She said, I have a two, I'm wearing a two piece. And he said, that sounds cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you were supposed to say, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but who hey okay i'm gonna say something y'all can think i'm mean for this or not but who thought that julian's new girlfriend what's her name again i can never remember you remember oh, her name, her it name was, is it's real short uh, uh she's an actress right she's right. A, like i think she's more of a, she's like a comedian no, oh her, her name is sunita mani no no in the her character's name oh her character's name is vera vera okay how many people think Vera looks like Toby? Like they look like they could be related. <laughs> that was funny when you said that. I don't think they look like they could be. Maybe you don't think so? maybe they could I, be related, I I brother I sister. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like you know Toby. <laughs> you know, with a wig on or something. It's like what the hell. You know, I don't know. Mm, you're just wrong for that. Maybe I'm being wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the first thing I thought. But I will say, when it comes to her, mm-hmm. and I don't know if we should save this to the... Or we're, we're kind of transitioning already. No, into let's... The next episode, I, well, right? I don't know what you're going to say, so... Well, I, I wanted to talk about who I think she is. Oh, no, let's wait till the second. You want to wait? Okay. Yeah, yeah let's wait till the second. This is a bomb, Let's man. wait till the second episode. This is, this is one of till we get theories. to the second episode. In this episode, they showed that donkey painting, which oh, is a uh, Balaam, story behind it. the donkey and the angel. And it's a biblical account of talking of a talking or biblical ass, stuff. A talking debating, ass. Talking ass. <laughs> <laughs> debating <laughs> with diviner Balaam. Okay. So the I told you what the, yeah, yeah. the story of it. So you go ahead and Oh, you gonna put it on me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm, I don't know if I remember all you know, the biblical stories are all kinda crazy, but he he was going to 
beat the donkey. Like the whole picture. I won't go on the whole thing, but the whole the picture. It shows like looks like dude's about to whoop that donkey. He was. Because the <laughs> donkey the donkey saw the angel. All right. So there's an angel in the picture. He's standing in the road. And the donkey, the dude was riding the donkey. And the donkey saw the angel and then moved over to the side of the road and kneeled, like kneeled down for the angel. And the dude Balam, isn't mm-hmm. it? Got pissed. And he's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm going to beat your butt, you know, get up. And he didn't see the angel. And then the donkey turns around and is like, dude, there's an angel on the road. That's a weird story. And then the angel pops up and says, you know, hold, hold your sword there, dude. You yeah. know, I'm here, blah, blah, blah. What was the point? I don't know. The point was... To trust Don't beat in, your ass. To, to, trust, <laughs> <laughs> to trust in the Lord or Maybe. listen to what he says. I don't, I'm, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm not, exa- oh, yeah, Maybe I'm not exactly just sure. Maybe it's just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there or something like that. Ooh, Ooh. deepness. Yeah. We can apply that to the episode. Just because we can't see the cult doesn't mean they're not there. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, but donkeys symbolize uh, service. Suffrage, yeah, suffering, peace, and not humility. Suffrage, that's yes, women's not suffrage, right. <laughs> suffering, <laughs> women's Suff- right to vote, <laughs> suffering. I think I said that last season too. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, we had mentioned earlier with Leanne. You know, she's just suspicious of people on the st- of yeah. everybody, people yeah. on the street. But then she has a reason to. She definitely th- does. There's only one thing left in the episode. What's the, one? the oh break-in. the break in? Yeah. Yes. The burglar. The yeah. break in. You guys, do you think this was some random street thuggery going on? Like they, you know, they said it's consistent with other break-ins. Or do you think it's the cult? Because why would he look under her pillow and grab that dagger? Yeah, there's no reason. Unless you're the tooth fairy, there's no reason to look (laughs) (laughs) under a pillow. I mean... Because people don't usually keep yeah, things under break, their pillow. Break, I mean, if you were going to break, I'm not breaking into people's houses, but if I was, I sure as heck would not be looking for, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Right. I wouldn't be looking for something under their pillow. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe people put guns under the pillows, which is crazy. To sleep. Yeah, your iPhone. Your phone might be under your pillow. Just because you put your phone on your pillow doesn't yeah, mean normal people start a people fire. Do. <laughs> I, yes. I heard fire starting, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I just, yeah, there's. Yeah, I think it was one of the cult members. I don't think I it was a too. mistake. I know the two. So. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe it's yeah. a red herring to throw us off. You True, know? this whole thing. Yeah, it could be. Could be. So that was, our, that's what we. So in episode one, that's yeah. what we took from that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, so hopefully we mentioned something that you didn't notice or, you know, if you guys had the same thought, let us know in the comments. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk about episode two because episode two was, was called Hive. And it was directed by, um, was it his daughter? What's yeah, name? Ishana. It was written okay. and directed. Written and directed? Oh. By Ishana. Oh, that's cool. And no, she didn't make that episode only 25 yeah, minutes sure long. Did. It was so 25 short. 25 minutes. How disappointed were we all as servant fans that it was 25 <laughs> minutes? I was like, what? It's over? What? I mean, now, one thing I will say about this episode, I'll give her credit. Okay. The They turned up the level of paranoia that was going on in this. Like, not only did, I mean, I was wondering if it was too much almost, Um they let us feel the paranoia that the characters were feeling. Like all of Leanne's paranoia, we were feeling it. And they did that by little little quick shots of stuff. Like, you know, she walks in the room and instead of a baby group, they she, you know, she sees cult members and, you know, mm-hmm. just hallucinating. She was hallucinating. Right. When the, the guy's walking, yeah. the, the guy's walking down the, the stairs, the worker who's putting in the He's security the cameras. Knife, the dagger. He's holding the dagger. First, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then it was really, no, he was just holding a screwdriver. You know? Yeah. 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 That was a real, that was w- well done. It was. And it was, it had me on the edge of my seat for only 25 minutes, but 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is interesting seeing things from Leanne's point of view. It is. You know, the, so in this episode, we, with Sean's cooking again, he's oh, making yeah. a guinea fowl empanadas. It's Dominican, it's Caribbean. I, yeah, I wonder if guinea fowl really is a Caribbean. I mean, I know we had it in Italy and it was delicious. Yeah, delicious. guinea fowl empanadas? Not in empanadas. We had guinea fowl. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not empanadas. <laughs> when we were in northern Italy, we had we had that. At yes. A really nice mm-hmm. star restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he also made a goat filled bonbons. You know, that's it, weird. Goat filled chocolate goat, bonbons. I don't know. I love goat, by the way. Love it. Love it. Love it. But uh, it's one of my favorite meats, you know? Yeah. But chocolate, goat filled chocolate bonbons? I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan of mole either. So you, I like, you mole. like mole, so, so. It's chocolate and meat, but I don't know. The scenes it were it was reminiscent to me of uh in season one Haggis. Ah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the way she was walking out and announcing, you know, what each dish was. Right, right. Were, so it was a callback to that. Mm-hmm. But let me complain about oh. something. And this goes back to Dorothy. Okay. So let's talk about why we don't like Dorothy. And let I was let talking us about count the ways. Let us count the ways. Well, here's one. <laughs> and we, we told you about episode one, you know, how she was acting. But this, she was really, really acting privileged, rich lady, like treating Leanne like this, the help, you know. And it, it was just kind of disgusting the way she was acting, you know. She's got all, uh, first of all, sh- they're hiding from a cult, <laughs> basically. I mean, hiding or they're just defending from a hold they're holed up in this fortress of a house Mm -hmm. trying to keep leanne from being killed by cult members or so they they feel right i don't really think they feel that way i think they just i think they feel leanne's overreacting which well i don't anyway but yes but yes that's that's the thing that's going on but yes Mm -hmm. and what does dorothy do she lines up a play date with strangers from the internet (laughs) <laughs> in a mommy group, like people they haven't met before. Right. And she, and she's been on this waiting list, she says, for eight weeks. She two months. Says, That's two, two months. months. So really, she Josephine, went online. Josephine incident happened three months ago. Right. So, so she waited four weeks before she lined this up. Right. Before she said, Let, I think it's a good idea to have strangers in the house. Mm-hmm. When, Disgusting. Yeah. Not even taking lands you know, feelings into absolutely not in consideration it's all about her and what she wants. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That, that really, that really upset me. You yeah. know, I was just like, Ugh, Dorothy, you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even Leanne was like, is this, is this for her or is this for Jericho? This yeah. is, this is for her. Right. You know, and what Sean say, you know, sometimes people need more. Yeah. Than, yeah. Than us. Yeah. And that was weird that, there was a couple times throughout this episode I felt like Leanne was almost making the family here her cult, you know, mm-hmm. and she's taken over as the leader and because she kept saying, you know, she has us. That's all she needs. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And keeping them very secluded. And I mean, we know it's for a good reason here, but I mean, there's, there's, she says something later on in the episode where she was uh, combing Dorothy's hair, where she's basically... It it all reminded me of a domestic violence type situation where the domestic abuser then tries to comfort their victim, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so like, and, and I'm not calling Dorothy a victim by any means. She's not. She's she's the abuser. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, Leanne comes in and like Dorothy's really upset, and she combs her hair, and she's like, you know, you got us, and all that. You know what I mean? It was almost right. like you know, cult mm-hmm. cult leaderish there. You think I'm going a little too far? No, I think that's all, not all, but that's what Leanne knows, too. That's true. That's all she knows from what, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how many years she's been, you know, in their service or in their grasp, but. Right. right. So, well, one thing that was weird and I wanted to Hold on ask a people about, well, I'm, I'm talking to the audience. You go ahead and drink. Um. 
Sean spilling the blood on on uh, Leanne. Like, well, it's not like he did it on purpose. I know. Well, of course not. He didn't do it on purpose, but it's almost like does that symbolize something? Is that like some sacrificial, like the spilling stuff? of blood? Right, right, something like, like that. I, I wonder know. if something's going to someone because you know, really, no one's ever died in servant. Only person who's Josephine. died is. Oh no, that's true. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. Oh, two people. Yeah, Josephine and Jericho. Yeah. So, but maybe this. The, it like what? What the hell was he doing? He's just busting ass from the kitchen to the living room. That goat blood away with the thing. Why was he going that way? I don't he was know. going towards the living room, like, or he's going to run it upstairs. Like, what was he doing with the goat blood going that direction? I know they had to have him spill it on her, but it made no sense. Why are you going to carry a Tupperware full of blood? Yeah, why didn't he go out the kitchen? From the kitchen to the living room area, like, huh. maybe, <laughs> maybe they did too good of a job making this like a mystery and we're all just looking way too much into everything <laughs> like <laughs> maybe they're just on set like okay just have them spill the blood on her yeah i don't know it didn't yeah. make sense to me spill blood on her prince her prince blouse her prince blouse her yeah prince she was dressed blouse. like a uh, prince <laughs> which i thought was funny because she um she was complaining that you guys aren't you know you don't know how to protect me from these people and she's like you know, sean was like well teach us right how and she's like well to spot them, you know, like they're, they're different and, and they wear clothes that they think normal people wear it while she was wearing this ruffled Prince outfit. That was like, <laughs> it's an odd thing to wear, you know, I got to looking at it though. It almost looks like a French maid outfit. If you think about it. And Dorothy was treating her like, Dorothy was treating her like, like the help, you know, just yeah. like, oh, we hired this person. She come, come over wonderful. here, Leanne, and introduce we yourself. We treat her like family. Like, ugh. Why? she's very protective of us. And why would you have her introduce herself to these people when Dorothy's freaked out about the whole situation? You mean, I well, mean when uh, Leanne is freaked Leanne's out freaked about out. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, Dorothy. She's so she's disgusting, insensitive. Yeah. Yeah, and she was singing, um, "These these people are these are our kind of people." Yeah, what does that mean? You know, mm-hmm. almost like we're better than you type, you know. Right. Mm, yeah. Anyway. What kind of mom would I be? So what kind of mom let's you talk are? about the people that showed up. First of all, Mr. Smiley was creepy. <laughs> you know. You could play that ukulele, though. <laughs> you could play the ukulele, but dude was creep, creep, creepy. He was creepy. And, um. You know, we had a couple of ladies in there that like knew a little bit more than normal people would. Oh, right. Yes. The, the one lady um, was asking her, brought up. Yeah, the Jericho the, incident. Ground zero, right? Like when Jericho died mm-hmm, that summer and it was mm-hmm. real hot and the ambulances were out. Why were they out in front of your house? You know, and she goes, oh, yeah, I think you're mistaken. Oh, I'm not. You know. Right, she wouldn't let it go. Yeah, and she had someone else there to oh, verify. She, oh, yeah, she right? said what was it? it was it was summer, right? It was right, hot. Right. So, I'm thinking, and this goes back to remember I, I was telling the audience here, hey, let's, you know, talk about uh, Vera mm-hmm. and who I think she really is. Mm-hmm. This kind of goes back to this. Now, I'm, I know I'm going out on a limb a little bit, but hear me out. So, the one lady has got to be a reporter. And I'm talking like a TMZ type gob, uh, <laughs> um, uh, what do you call those people? Like gossip column inquirer type reporters, right? Like um, investigative journalist type thing. Okay. Okay. And she, they expose people and blah, 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 blah. So I, I really think that that's what she, her tone was very aggressive towards that. And then the other person probably her assistant. How did they know about Carrie. Julian being in rehab? Right. I well, mean, guess what? That's where he met Vera. So I think Vera probably gave him the scoop, like, "Hey, I, I, you know, I'm dating this guy. His, his family's, you know, celebrities. His sister and brother-in-law, you know, a reporter and a celebrity chef, and blah blah blah. blah. You know, maybe we could find something on them. Mm-hmm. And she's there trying to get." stuff you know right so and that that may be it maybe and vera knowing the situation when she was watching the 
watching them on the when Julianne and Vera were watching them on the screen uh-huh. on the monitoring screen she said oh there's tension right she knew something was up and mm-hmm. he's like you know well, yeah thanks for bringing that up because here's something kind of off topic but Julian he was gaslighting Vera he was gaslighting gaslighting him. gaslighting is for those who don't know we 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 hear it in the news every day now because it's something big that's going on. But gaslighting basically is when you're trying to convince someone else that they're crazy, mm. you know, that mm-hmm. they're wrong, that they're the ones that are inappropriate or whatever, you know. So he, like, he told her, "Oh, you're just you're just projecting that to make yourself feel to entertain yourself, entertain or, yourself, mm-hmm. or something like that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you're just looking for something, or, mm-hmm. you know. And he. He did that to Leanne, too, I think. He did it a couple times, two mm-hmm. or three times during the episode. Right. And I just noticed it right away. I'm like, why is he gaslighting everybody? You know, maybe self-righteousness because he came out of rehab and, you know, he's sober now. Right. That's a common thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But he's tripping. He's over there talking about Leanne climbed on top of the <laughs> the house. <laughs> well, maybe we should address that first. So, okay. just so people know where we're at. Okay, okay. Because that's after the the bee, well, the beehive fell into the um, uh, fireplace thing. Right, right? Which, which is common. That, that really can be that explained. Is it is common. Really, this maybe this whole show can really be technically yeah. explained logically. Right, right. Um, and show the paranoia. Like, this mm-hmm. is what paranoia does to you. Mm-hmm. It takes perfectly normal events and changes of them into something else, you know? So I could see that, you know, uh, again, the, the one thing that did seem supernatural was her in her little auto writing session where she was drawing those little check marks, which are, you know, that's what we used to draw as kids for seagulls. Mm-hmm. I grew up on, you know, in LA near the ocean. So that <laughs> we always would draw, you know, do that for seagulls. And then he got attacked. So maybe it's just a coincidence, though. Yeah. Maybe it had nothing to do with it. You know, right. maybe she's just, you know, just displaying stress behavior and, you know. Maybe. maybe. I mean, they tried to make it seem you they can did. you can somewhat think, oh, it is something supernatural because right. so, the bee lands on her hand. So does a paranoid person, mm-hmm. you know, but that bee, that's what I thought, too. It's like, oh, she made that happen. At, remember I even said to you, oh, she definitely made that happen. Mm-hmm. But then later on, I was like, maybe she didn't. Maybe that bee just came from. Came from the hive the house, or came the from hive, the, yes. yeah, came from the house and the, in the chimney. Cause that is a common thing that happens. Yeah. Uh, or maybe she may, or maybe she did make it happen and she got mad at what, because Dorothy told her to stay upstairs. She's like, I'm going downstairs yeah. with these bees. All right. So. And I'm not I, happy I that let these us get past that point without that these, explaining that these mommy <laughs> and, and B go ahead and right. Explain. So the B hive fell down, right? Mm-hmm. And it hit the little door in there. What's that called when you know that little thing you pull in the um oh I don't know fireplace that yeah I know what you're talking about you know about. what I'm talking about mm-hmm. the, yeah the little door that you can close it up inside anyway it hit the edge of that and the bees all swarmed in and attacked the group you know and uh you know sean had to jump in there and close it up and you know mentioned he didn't get um stung so that again that's making us think it was supernatural because she was you know leanne was protecting sean maybe not getting stung and the people all ran and dorothy was mortified that her little party was ruined and stuff you know Mm-hmm. She said, we have tres leches. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We have tres leches, but she didn't take Jericho out of the room, out of the house. I mean, he didn't get stung, thank yeah. goodness, but she wasn't concerned that he wasn't right. going to get stung. She didn't stung. cover him up. She didn't run him out of the, the room into the other room. Like, that's the first thing you'd do. Right. You'd protect your baby. Yeah. Very weird. Yeah, so... I mean, Sean was... Oh, yeah, we didn't even mention the, uh, you know, at the beginning of the episode, we see uh, guys installing security cameras, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And Dorothy was just being insufferable to them. Oh, you're still here, and you guys got to hurry. I got people coming in, and ugh, just 
nasty, right? Mm-hmm. Like she was just a, a Karen. She was a Karen, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I was so grossed out by her this episode. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and she was just so the way she was she was just so mean to Leanne too. Just Yeah. It was I mean very Leanne's condescending. suffering from PTSD. <laughs> she really is. And she yeah. was just like, Let me a word, Leanne. And, oh, and she and yeah. we got this six thousand dollar, you know, security, security system. system um yeah, you she know, was set up for you and end. right. Well and, for and every, I'm sure everybody saw it, but if you don't know what we're talking about, when Leanne uh, came out of the kitchen, everybody was outside, so she didn't know where they were. And Mr. Smiley came out of the bathroom. He was in there for a while, <laughs> gross, right? I don't know why you admit that, but. And she was freaked out by him. And uh, um, she told him, stay there, don't move any closer. And he started moving closer. I don't know why he did that. That's why the dude's creepy, but maybe he's just creepy. You know, maybe mm-hmm. he was just trying to hit on her and he was creepy and it wasn't some dude, you know, it wasn't part of the, the cult or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, maybe showing the, the whole paranoia thing, but yeah, why would he keep moving forward? Like if I was in that situation and she was uncomfortable, I would just go in the other room. <laughs> I'd just leave and I'd be like, Hey, don't, it's okay. You know, right. I'll leave. Just stand still. And or I'd go outside, you know, mm-hmm. and I'd leave. I definitely wouldn't move forward, you know. Right. So Leanne then she's pointing, the, she's pointing like, the knife at him. She's telling I'll kill you. And that's when Dorothy came in and started just admonishing her for. Right. Oh, how dare you. Leanne. Let's have a word. That was, uh, the way she said that. Mm-hmm. It's just like, ugh. Yeah. And then when she took her upstairs, she was just, you know. All we, you talking know, down to her. Yeah, talking down to her lands. Like, you don't let, you know, nobody's listening to me. Yeah. And she's like, all we do is listen to you. Right. Yeah. Didn't listen to her at all. And so, Dorothy, yeah. Dorothy, Dorothy. Dorothy's awful. <laughs> oh, she, and she, uh, well, you know, I don't blame Dorothy for telling Sean to get, move that goat. You know, she's like, get rid of the goat head or something like that. Oh, you know what? I saw somebody's comment about get rid of the goat head or something about the goat head. And then I, I, I didn't catch that in the show. What happened? Oh, she told you, her to move the goat head? She told Sean to move the goat head because Sean was cooking the goat. Yeah. You know, he was cutting up the goat in the beginning of the episode. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, she's expecting company. Yeah. There's a goat head on... Um, it was a real right, creepy right. goat head. Yeah, she creepy. just it just as she's walking by, just as she's walking me. by, she says, "Sean, get rid of the get rid of that goat head." Oh, you know, is, if you all it was real quick haven't had goat head, it's delicious. Cabeza <laughs> tacos are one of the most amazing things ever. So goat heads are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that goat head, who knows it? Goats. I looked up goat the symbolisms of goat. Um, goat well, symbolism. Well, goats are symbolic of independence and faith. You know, they oh. a lot of times, you know, people do they do sacrifice sacrificial things. They sacrifice a goat, yeah. right? But I they, thought that was just because they were important to farmers at the time. You know, hmm. they provided milk and cheese and yeah. Well, they are symbols of health. Symbols of really. Mm-hmm. Oh. There's mm-hmm. symbols of good tacos. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Vital- there's symbols of vitality in many cultures around the world. You make a great goat dish. <laughs> that curry goat. Thank you. Oh, my God. That stuff is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but goat the goat heads are also symbol, symbolic of Satan. Yeah, they, they, use, mm-hmm. they use that a lot. Of, mm-hmm. Like the like uh, Black Peter and yes. Witch, that movie. <laughs> yes. Was it, was it Black Peter or was it Black Philip? Oh, maybe it was Black Philip. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. Well, where'd that come from? I was, well, I was thinking goat, then I was thinking the You're goat. heating up blood? I was thinking goat blood, and, you know, because Sean was cooking with goat blood. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said it was a game changer. Yeah, yeah, they use it for to thicken the soup. Right. So I guess I looked up that when blood is heated up, it mm. coagulates right. somewhere around 75 degrees. It coagulates. Which makes it ideal for thickening liquids. Oh yeah, I'm never. If I was their friends, or I would not eat. I don't know <laughs> if I'd eat Sean's food. Yeah, 
Yeah, he goes he goes out there quite a bit. No. You know, there's a few things I definitely would eat, but some of it, mm, no. Mm -hmm. Especially after seeing him do the, um, what do you call that thing? The human body part to use in the first oh, one. Oh, you mean uh, the, her. Um, placenta. Yeah. Yeah, I would never eat. Then knowing that he did that. Exactly. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, find, I find it repulsive. Like it's cannibalism. Mm. It's cannibalism. You're not yeah, supposed to eat yeah. human beings. So, I mean, a lot of women do it. I mean, I heard that, but. Yeah. I just, I don't agree with it. Hmm. Never going to convince me that's a good thing. Interesting. So. Let's talk about that scar on well i don't need okay so all right let's get let's get into this so leanne is paranoid right when they were doing baby when, yoga when they were doing baby yoga with the sound bath she <laughs> was looking for scars on on everybody's on back, everybody's yeah. back they show this one lady who's who's sitting there and it appears well you thought the scar appeared but when i went back and watched it it does look like she has two scars on her back at first i thought maybe it was two strings from her sweater right. but well, it does look like she has two scars on her point is a few scars on her back you barely see it and then it's gone it, but it wasn't it didn't go away you know well it you, you didn't see it long enough to really understand what you're looking at. You know, that's why right. we had, we had differences of opinion. Mm -hmm. I think the whole point was that she's paranoid. She wants to see that she's looking for it. You know, mm -hmm. not that she wants to in a positive way, mm -hmm. but that's what she's after, you know? Right. And then she sees something and before you know it, like her attention's drawn away from it. But you know what I mean? Right. Right. So just like her seeing them as cult members earlier mm -hmm. you know when she walked in she had to like steal herself and stop that hallucination right anyway. mm. the last thing is dorothy at the very well oh it's leanne combing her hair remember yeah dorothy combing her hair dorothy makes the toast that toast reminded me of uh season one when her dad made the toast at the baptism it's a balloon is the season. Oh. But he makes a toast attention? and it's very One similar. Minute. I think kind of in that same spot that she was standing. Uh -huh. So anyway. It's I a little callback. Yeah. That. Yeah. I think so. And, and what was the weird look on Dorothy at the, when the, the episode ended? She's got that far away look yeah. uh, on her, on and her then, face. Then Leanne leaves after giving her cult leader speech. Is she remembering? And she's looking away. She's like, looking away. I think she's, I think... Dorothy's starting to remember what she did. Maybe she never. I mean, I, Dorothy's crazy. Okay, I think Dorothy is oh, yeah. is crazy. But to me, that look that she's always done is part of her is remembering what she did hmm. or what happened. So, yeah. What do you think? I think that's it's a good theory. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying I don't, to remember. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Or fighting the memory. Obviously, she Maybe. doesn't want to remember that. Mm -hmm. But then she has this weird look. Like, you know, after Leanne leaves and it's all good. And then she looks like all crazy mm -hmm. to the side. Well, you said, is she afraid of Leanne? Right. Yeah. You know what? That's right. That's what I did think in the beginning. You just reminded me. Like maybe she's starting to be afraid. Well, like most cult members are afraid of their leader. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I know this is my theory. This is just something that's came up in my head. Is like Leanne's trying to make her little family here a cult, her cult, you know, and run it like that's the only way she knows, right? Mm -hmm. And she's trying to be the, the leader there. That's why Julian, she, she's like, nope. We're not stopping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> shut up. And then, you know, with Dorothy, she did that at the end. And, you know, we're the mm -hmm. only ones you need and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. What anyway. was your favorite, your favorite uh, line or thing that happened in this, in see, episode two? In episode two? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. There was a lot of good stuff. I'm probably just how paranoid Leanne was and how it kept showing that, that's not really what's happening, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed that part of it. 
you know, her seeing things that weren't there. Okay. I think that's probably, probably it. My favorite part was when Vera said, <laughs> we got your back, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of cool. She was moving her head around. Anyway, yeah. I I, that I, you funny. know what? I did like, I did like, um, we got your back, girl. You funny. know what? I did like, I did like, um, I'll give Dorothy some credit here. When Dorothy told Mr. Smiley to put his shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, okay, dude, put your shirt on. <laughs> oh, so. my goodness. All right. So, well, that we got was... uh, episode three coming up. Yeah, this Friday, Friday, right? I can't wait. Mm-hmm. We'll see. So far, the season's good. Yeah. Like it's. I'm loving it. Causing emotional distress, <laughs> which is good, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, but we will. What a do, great series! Yeah, it is a great series. I love it so much. Oh, someone someone said um, online somewhere that uh, they really hope it doesn't end up like Lost, you know, and they just they just lose all these you know things that are happening. Mm-hmm. That worried me too. I'd be really. I'd be really mad. Yeah, I hope at the, not. At the M man. I'm thinking that it won't because from the beginning, M Night Shyamalan was saying that he he knows he knows right? what's going to happen in the end, and he's had right. it planned. You know, he okay. So that makes me feel better. I think we're all just so used to M Night Shyamalan with the surprise. We're like looking, you know, yeah, looking, looking at every it. little thing, every little camera angle, every so, but. <laughs> But thanks for listening, and yeah. maybe yeah, for the long time. it has been a long time. Maybe for the final, we will do it. Actually, do a video. That depends. She has. We to have full time jobs, so right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and and, and, and I chipped my tooth. We but have. Yeah, I got to fix now. But we get. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? I want to be on camera. Oh, we have a a good time, but. It, it, it's so much work for so little viewage, you know? So it's like, maybe we'll just do it like this and put a couple episodes in it or whatever. Yeah. Well, we hope to Unless get you, you get like 10,000 of your fans to, to subscribe, then we'll go back to doing videos. <laughs> 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 but remember, how but many, we appreciate how many subs the, the are like 156? The mighty 156? Something like that. So we, we do appreciate you I don't even you think it's that much. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> Uh, so thank you all. Um, and then put your comments yeah, in. Yeah, put your in comments the, in. Let's hear yeah. your theories. We, and we like, to, we like to hear it and interact with you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So thank you. Adios. Servant fans. Bye-bye. Everybody buzz like a bee. Psst, psst.